Okay, guys, so it's essentially started right now. Um, we are now, of course, at 4 p.m. Uh, Central European time, and we are going to be starting with Battle Academy. I thought it would be fair, though, before we start with Battle Academy, for me to let you guys know what games we currently have that are going to be on this sale. Um, so, number one, we've got Battle Academy, of course, and every single one of the DLCs uh, that accompany it are 30% off. We've also got uh, Battle of the Bulge, Battles in Italy, Battles in Normandy. We've got Battlefront. Close Combat Gateway to Khan, Close Combat Panthers in the Fog, Close Combat Walked Am Rhein, Close Combat The Longest Day, Commander Europe at War Gold, Decisive Campaigns The Blitzkrieg from Warsaw to Paris, Frontline The Longest Day, Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day Bombing the Reich, Gary Grigsby's War in the West, Gary Grigsby's World at War, A World Divided, Heroes of Normandy, Heroes of Normandy U.S. Rangers, History, Legends at War, John Tiller's Campaign Series, Norm Coger's The Operational Art of War Three, Order of Battle Blitzkrieg, Order of Battle Winter War, Panzer Corps and all of its DLC, Piercing Fortress Europa, Steel Panthers, World at War General Edition, Strategic Command World War II, War in Europe, uh, Tigers on the Hunt, World in Flames, and World War II General Command. So we've actually got like a number of games here that you guys could pick up uh, for 30% off today. And again, for those of you that don't know what day is today, today is, of course, the uh, the celebration of D-Day or really the, the remembrance of D-Day. Yes, Panther is in the Fog is definitely there, Northumbrian Laddie. Absolutely. Um, and we'll be playing some Panthers in the Fog a little bit later, so uh, we'll definitely take a look at that. But uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and jump into the campaign here on Battle Academy for, you guessed it, the Battle for Normandy. I mean, how could we not play the Battle for Normandy? We're absolutely going to be playing a, uh, a Battle for Normandy here to see how we do. And quite frankly, um, I haven't played too much Battle Academy. I played a lot of Battle Academy 2. And I played a lot of the Battle Academy um, user mods, which are excellent. So an airborne assault has captured the village behind the invasion beach. Their mission is to block any German counterattack, but they cannot hold out for long. The invading troops must reach the village before the paratroopers are overwhelmed. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at our objectives here. Um, so we do have 300 points to spend. I'm definitely going to be spending that on a Sherman, uh, probably another tank, an M5 light tank. I know I should probably get some of these U.S. Rangers in our squad, so we'll grab two of those. Um, 29 points left. Let's grab a bazooka, just in case we need it, and we'll jump in, of course. So here we go, guys. Clear out the German resistance behind the beachhead, then secure the causeway that crosses the floodplain. Rush the village before it's recaptured by German forces. So we're going to try our best to actually make this actually happen. Can't promise you anything, but we do have a tremendous amount of units here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start moving forward. Now, I know that at this settlement, there's probably going to be some Germans. So I am going to go ahead and bring the scout forward uh, on a hunt mission. We'll hunt again. And right now we can't get into that building, but maybe next turn. I'm almost certain that there's going to be units over here. Yep, sure enough. There they are. So we want to make sure to be careful with these guys. We'll turn towards the enemy. I'm not sure exactly where they're going to be, but I'm guessing they're probably in this bunker. Let's go ahead and open fire. We'll also bring forward the Sherman tank. Hopefully we're not getting too close to the enemy here. Turn towards the enemy. And yeah, we're definitely going to have to get some units uh, in this building for sure. And of course, there's some more enemies in that bunker. Let's keep moving. We're going to have to take some risks without a doubt. And one of those risks is probably going to be getting hit by German uh, artillery or German machine guns uh, from inside these bunkers. Let's go ahead and open fire. And again, we're basically just taking a guess that there's actually going to be Germans in there. Uh, more than likely, they're, they're not going to be in there at all. Um, we're, we'll keep moving. We'll find out sooner or later. Um, so we are going to move our guys forward. And sure enough, a nasty ambush there. Our men are suppressed, and we're going to have to just wait, wait around a bit. Um, I will fire again into that area, but they could even be over here by the trees. We're really not 100% sure as of this moment, uh, but if anybody wants to take a guess, please do. <laughs> we could certainly uh, use help and uh, use assistance in not losing too many men. So I think that there could be enemies in there. I mean, I would certainly put my men in these sandbags, but again, it's just a guess until they expose themselves. Uh, for now, we're just going to keep on moving forward, and we've got a number of places we need to take. So we need to take the causeway checkpoint, uh, we need to capture all of the victory points, and we need to get to the um, 
actual village. So this is actually going to be quite a tough mission, uh, believe it or not. So I am going to move forward on this bunker. Sure enough, we got enemies firing at us. And we're already suppressed. But we've got to get in here somehow. So I think what we're going to do, uh, they're, they're hitting our guys really hard. So we're going to use the naval bombardment over here. And we're going to use the P-47 Thunderbolt over here. And impact is going to be one and two turns, respectfully. Uh, and I'm also going to be moving the tanks forward ahead of the men in this case. We'll also move the priest. Now, this is an artillery gun, so this thing should be able to sort of fire over some shots at the enemy. Okay, we can actually hear the Germans uh, complaining, so we're definitely hitting them. But of course, there is a cooldown on each of these uh, these particular abilities, so we have to keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. And we've got the U.S. Bazooka. It's really not going to be doing much good for us until we spot a German tank. Hopefully we don't. Uh, but let's go ahead and end the turn and hope for the best here. We're throwing it over to the Germans pretty quickly. And I think the P-47 Thunderbolt is going to come in. Boom! Absolutely. Hopefully we got a kill here. Although there's a, definitely a chance we didn't. Um, and of course, it looks like it's back to our turn. So far, it doesn't look like we have any enemies here, but I think we'll get a better, closer look when we get up here. And sure enough, look at that. We've got enemies in the bunker and enemies in this bunker. So, of course, we want to open fire. We can also try to assault them, um, but we actually are doing pretty good with just the opening fire right now. The effectiveness is 22. Yes, that plane was fast, Salamantes. So there we go. Man, they are returning fire big time. Um, this guy is not going to be able to shoot, but if we get close enough, I think we can open fire here on the enemy. It's only five effectiveness, but believe it or not, we managed to rout the enemy, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, now, I'd like to get into this bunker ourselves, and of course, with our tank, we'll start opening fire on this German infantry unit. Boom, beautiful, guys. And once again, the reason we are playing a sort of Normandy-based mission is today is, uh, a, of course, the, uh, not really celebration, but um, the, the sort of remembrance of, of D-Day, of, of the Battle of Normandy. How's it going, Dally? Good to see you, man. So um, we are having a 30% off discount on numerous games, mostly World War II games, of course. Um, I think the only exception of a game that could be seen as a non-World War II game, I mean, there's plenty of World War II scenarios in it, but that would be, um, let's take a look here, uh, Norm Kroger's The Operational Art of War 3. I mean, there have just been so many people uh, that have added scenarios to that game that there are tremendous amounts of different wars in there. It's a really fun game. Uh, you know, you can even play the Iran-Iraq War. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It really is. So that's one of the uh, possibilities, of course. And, of course, we've got a bunch of others that are 30% off. Um, I want to make sure that you guys uh, take a look. If anybody does buy them, um, make sure to take a look at the code available on the site. Um, type that in before you check out. And make sure you take one of these selected games. And sure enough, we spotted some of the enemies already. Start opening fire on these bastards. And the effectiveness is only five here. So actually, the chances of us getting a kill are pretty low. Um, but with this light tank, the effectiveness is actually 15 is somewhat higher and we actually managed to get one German we also suppressed the unit so I'm gonna keep on moving forward and we just want to try and overrun the enemy here so we want to be careful because we've got some naval bombardment coming in and obviously getting caught in the middle of that is no fun and sure enough enemy unit here that spotted us I'm hoping we could take them out oh my goodness we actually got really lucky that we were able to deflect that round there we go, we got two of them. The only way to break through here is going to be to utterly just go in for the attack on these guys. I don't think there's any other way to break through. So we are going to have to risk our tanks and try and get a victory. Wish we had a few more men. Alright, let's open fire. Effectiveness 7. Come on, boys. Not bad. Another one down. Also got to be careful with our airborne units because we're supposed to keep these guys alive. 
Uh, obviously, that may or may not be possible, and I'm actually starting to regret bringing in this uh, naval bombardment. We may not uh, need it, so we'll take a look here. And we can also go ahead and bring some medical support um, to one of our men. Let's bring it to these guys. Just patch them up a little bit. We'll do the same with these guys when we get a chance. Uh, but we'll end our turn and hope for the best. Here comes our naval bombardment. I hope it doesn't hit our own tanks. And we just destroyed our own tanks with naval bombardment. Uh, definitely some friendly fire or not so friendly fire when you think about it uh, happening on the tank. Yes, absolutely true, uh, Byron. Absolutely true. And uh, we just proved it there. Actually, some of our infantry are very lucky not to get blown up. But I'm pretty sure that there's no Germans in that bunker. I mean, pretty sure, not 100%. Let's find out. And they're still alive in there. Uh, we're definitely going to assault. 86% chance of a victory. And we did get lucky on that. At least we took the position, but we've got a lot of movement to do. And as you can see, we've got a lot of marshes to clear. We're going to, of course, move into the causeway. Now, we're supposed to take all of the causeways here. So this is not going to be easy. Hopefully, the enemy doesn't have too many tanks waiting for us. Uh, which week? Um, so this week. Yes. Good job, Artie Boys and Salamantes. <laughs> Hey, they got a hit. I mean, a hit's a hit, right? And, of course, that did happen, um, you know, on a much more serious note. That definitely happened during uh, World War II with the uh, friendly fire. It's just kind of part of war. You can't really avoid it. Uh, you can try to avoid it, but chances are it's it's going to happen one way or another. So it's going to be this week, Tesker. The entire week, of course, um, is going to be 30% off all the way till Sunday. Hello, Gares. How you doing, man? It's good to see everybody here. Um, so... We will be trying to do a two-hour stream as best we can. Uh, let me also go ahead and just give you guys a look at the games on sale. Oh, absolutely. Could also be some infantry with some grenades, anti-tank grenades, um, any sort of different uh, combination. So I'm going to move up the priest. I should have saved that artillery. I'm going to go ahead and try to fire with the priest. I don't think I can fire this turn, but I can fire next turn and just kind of fire some artillery over there. Uh, we'll also try to move some of our infantry up as well. These guys need to definitely get in the fight. <clears throat> okay, let's see, guys. Moving forward. Oh, yeah, there we go. Speaking of anti-tank guns, yeah, we definitely need um, a plane because we're going to get blown up by that damn 88. That 88 is a vicious, vicious gun. Um, and uh, not surprised that Hitler is a big fan of the 88 millimeter. Now we do have some enemy soldiers here, so let's go ahead and fire on them. But first I wanna see if we can hit them with the tank. Let's see if we can do that. So uh, thanks North Northumbrian Laddie, this is um, Battle Academy. And um, Battle Academy 2, um, which is a follow-up of this, is not on sale because it focuses on the Eastern Front, Battlefront. Battle Academy focuses on the Western Front, which is what today is about and what this week is about, essentially remembering D-Day and uh, battles of the Western Front, things like that. So for now, we're going to, as far as Battle Academy goes, this and every single one of its DLCs are 30% off. You want second, guys? Okay, so we've got to be very careful with that 88. Of course, I'm going to bring the tank up, even though I shouldn't, and try to fire at it. Um, if not, I'm going to have to wait for probably one of these planes to, to be open, uh, to drop some bombs. And uh, don't forget, guys, if you have anything from that list you want me to take a look at, um, just name it. I will try to take a look. We can't look at everything. For instance, I don't have War in the uh, West on this computer. Uh, War in the West is an excellent game, though, and it's very, very in-depth. Um, it's definitely extremely in-depth. And yes, it is, Condra. It certainly is Battle Academy. All right, so let's end the turn here, turning it over to the Germans. They're going to use that 88, I'm sure, almost immediately. It looks like they have some artillery here. Oh, man. Okay, well, they missed our men. Luckily, we got our men out of that town almost immediately. Um, but they're still suppressed, and it looks like a few of them still got hit. So very unlucky U.S. infantry right there. We're still going to keep moving forward. Sorry about that. That is definitely weird. Let me take a look here and change that. So this is just going to be the 
D-Day stream. I could have sworn we changed it before, so let's see if it changes now. So take a look now, guys. Um, if you refresh, it should say D-Day stream. And we're really just playing a tremendous amount of different games. We will play some close combat as well, um, some uh, Panthers in the Fog and some Gateway to Con. Let me also see if we can drop some artillery here on the 88. No luck. It looks like no luck on the actual uh, attack. We're going to keep on moving forward. And yeah, once again, for people just arriving, um, we are playing a number of different games today. Um, once again, it is the uh, celebration of the Battle of uh, D-Day, Operation Overlord. So we are going to be doing a lot of different stuff. Uh, not just uh, close combat, but a bunch of different games. I want to make sure it's actually changed. Let's see if it has. Just doing a little refresh here. Yeah, it should say D-Day stream now. Um, so that should be pretty clear. Ah, nice. I think Byron is right. So when you hear the shouting, like when we bomb them, they must have been effect affected morale-wise. We'll find out because they're going to either shoot at us or they're going to get hit. So the German engineers are moving up. We'll open fire on them, but I want to get a little closer and there could definitely be Germans waiting. Sure enough, we got suppressed. Yep, kind of expected that. Um, we're going to keep moving back and let's move this Sherman forward. And the effect of this is only three, and I think it's because this other tank is in our way. Um, so I might open fire on the building. Hope for the best. We've also got to keep in mind we've got some U.S. scouts here. Thanks, guys. False information for the invasion, of course. Let them think we're coming from one way and then show up somewhere else. Perfect. That's the way we want to do it. So I do want to take that causeway checkpoint. I'm surprised no one attacked us for taking it. Um, could also be that they're waiting for our infantry to show up. Once again, the Germans could be waiting in a bunker. And all of a sudden, as soon as our infantry uh, become visible, they start opening up on us. But we've only got two causeways here to focus on. So that does simplify things a little bit. Um, we want to try and stay by the causeways, of course. Okay, I'm going to try to attack this German infantry unit. Some grenades. Oh man, come on, Recon. Damn it, Recon, you could have done better than that. Open fire. There we go, finally. And we also get a little promotion there. That's always fun. Now, I am going to bring some medic assistance uh, to this unit right here uh, because they lost a bunch of guys during that attack. And we got 42 viewers. Absolutely awesome. It's great to see all of you here. Once again, I want to make it very clear that we do have a massive sale going on uh, on the Matrix website. So I want you guys all to check that out, especially if you want to get some great deals on some games. Um, that's going to be where the sale is. I will read the list of games once again. And we're also going to be trying to do as many World War II games as possible here. Um, again, there's a few we can't play, but most of them we can probably play here. Let's take a look. I think that's going to be about it, and we will end the turn. And of course, let me know, guys, if you want me to move past um, Battle Academy. Uh, honestly, this is a mission I really enjoy. Also, since it's D-Day, I thought this would be a perfect mission. But look at that. They're already calling in more artillery. How much artillery do these Germans have? Uh, we definitely need to get off this side of the, uh, of the causeway. Because right now, they're getting some pretty good hits on our men. All right, there we go. So it looks like, oh, I hear a tank. Could be an SDKFC, some sort of uh, armored car, but I don't like to have to worry about that. So let's see if the priest can go ahead and fire over here. Nice shot right through the house. We'll move forward with our scouts in the marsh. And yes, there's definitely some German infantry here. We're definitely going to have to open up on these guys. 
There's one down, and they're suppressed. Uh, this means they probably can't hurt us or our tanks. Will there be an Afghanistan 11 key giveaway? No. Today is uh, the celebration of D-Day, the Battle of D-Day, so uh, we're not going to be playing any Afghanistan 11 today. Although, nice try. Nice try. Uh, yes, we could definitely do Order of Battle Blitzkrieg. Just got a promotion for that target kill. So Order of Battle Blitzkrieg will be up next. We'll take a look at one of the uh, DLCs. Ah, the friendly AI in the Warsaw scenario is causing you some grief. Interesting. Well, yeah, we could definitely take a look. Hello, Laku. How you doing, man? I hope I'm saying your name correctly. One German down. Let's get some more. All right, we've at least suppressed them. I mean, that's definitely a start, but we've got to move a bunch more infantry across here. Also, make sure to let your friends know, guys, about this awesome sale that we're having. Um, and it's going to be going on till Sunday. Um, for those of you that don't know, Sunday is uh, uh, the end of the week for most people over here. Um, I guess a few people th can think that Friday is the end of the week. And uh, I don't know. Some people think Saturday is the end of the week. I guess it's subjective. <laughs> for us, Sunday is the end of the week. So keep that in mind. It's Sunday when this sale ends. So anytime from today till Sunday, 30% off all the games I mentioned before. And I will mention them again. Um, so I'm just going to go through the list for you guys. And the name of this game is called Battle Academy, um, is, the, uh, is the name of the game, Laku. So um, the games that are going to be for sale are Battle Academy and all of its DLCs, Battle of the Bulge, Battles in Italy, Battles in Normandy, Battlefront, Close Combat Gateway to Khan, Close Combat Panthers in the Fog, Close Combat Walk Dom Rhine, Close Combat The Longest Day, uh, Commander Europe at War Gold, Decisive Campaigns, The Blitzkrieg from Warsaw to Paris, Frontline, The Longest Day, Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day, Bombing the Reich, Gary Grigsby's War in the West, Gary Grigsby's World at War, A World Divided, Heroes of Normandy, Heroes of Normandy, U.S. Rangers, History, Legends of War, John Tiller's Campaign Series, Norm Kroger's The Operational Art of War 3, which also has a lot of modern scenarios in it. I mean, you can play the Iran-Iraq War, you can play Dian Bin Fu in that game, it's, it's an unbelievable game. Uh, Order of Battle Blitzkrieg, Order of Battle Winter War. So for those Order of Battle guys, those are the two that we're basically allowing the sale on because they're fairly close to uh, the Western Front. Not all of the Order of Battle uh, battles, as you know, really are part of the Western Front. Uh, Panzer Corps and all of the DLC, uh, Piercing Fortress Europa, Steel Panthers World at War General Edition, Strategic Command World War II War in Europe, uh, Tigers on the Hunt, World in Flames, and World War II General Commander. So there's a lot out there, guys. I mean, really just a ton of stuff uh, to actually jump in and play uh, and get for a really, really cheap price, honestly. Um, and uh, definitely, definitely worth it. Take a look here very quickly. Hold on one moment. Just want to make sure that uh, I actually didn't have Strategic Command installed on this PC, which I kind of wanted to touch upon because it's actually a game I really, really enjoy. Uh, maybe one of my favorite World War II games of all time. Uh, let's see if we can get past the Causeway checkpoint. Oh, boy. Ambush. We actually deflected the ambush, but... Oh boy, we're gonna get hit here. Deflected, and there's the Panzerfaust. I'm amazed that we're deflecting this. We will reverse. Panzerfaust just destroyed us. Now we've gotta wait for a bomber because we could actually call in a bomber on that position and probably waste it pretty quickly. But I'm a little pissed off that that guy managed to get us. Let's see if we can kill the Panzerfaust. Yes, Winter War is very, very fun for sure. And considering, well, seeing whether or not I can actually get Winter War um, up here on the screen without you guys seeing what I type in, uh, we might be able to unlock a few of the future uh, battles. Um, so you guys can get a look at that, sort of the uh, we'll kind of go deeper into Winter War, as it were. Uh, because I've got some special wizardly powers that allow me to uh, unlock a bunch of the battles in-game. But I don't want you guys to see what I'm typing in. 
Um, so let's see. We'll end the turn here. Okay, reinforcements have arrived. Beautiful. And we needed some reinforcements. So as you can see, we've got some new tanks as well as some more infantry units. Uh, some U.S. engineers. Uh, we definitely have needed these guys. And I just love how the this, this screen is littered with the bodies of the dead and wounded. Um, I just think it's a really good addition to any sort of war game to be able to kind of look across the damage you've done and the damage that has been done to you. And with all of the enemy bombardment on us, yeah, they've, done, they've definitely done some damage. So I'm going to drop this airstrike right on top of that Panzerfaust. I'm going to start moving forward with the men. Let's move some men over here, move some men over here as well. And it looks like we've got some enemies here. Now, with assault, there's only 34% chance of a win, which is not very good. It's actually pretty low. Um, I am, however, going to add another man to this unit, but I'm still going to assault with just grenades. So we're basically just going to open fire on these guys. And that's only an effectiveness level of 10. And considering these guys are German engineers, they've got some machine guns, they've got some wicked weapons, so we do want to be careful. But what I really want to see is I want to see that bazooka get totally blown up only three percent effectiveness but it's something <laughs> yeah well we, we we had to make one exception dally we had to make one exception yes battle academy is great and also not to mention the incredible amount of user scenarios i mean there's so many users in this game that just love the game so much. They've really put their all into this game um, to make some scenarios that you wouldn't even expect in a game like this. For instance, uh, I've actually played the World War One scenario myself, uh, which completely changes the game and allows you to get into some World War One vehicles. And if you get the game, it's totally free. I mean, one of the great things about um, a lot of the games we have here today, Strategic Command's another, um, you know, uh, Battle Academy's another, and damn it, we could have called in an airstrike on that 88 millimeter. I thought he was dead. Uh, let's see if we can change. You sure you want to stop this action? Yes. Unfortunately, we're going to have to call it in on the 88. Um, there's just a lot of games that we have where you can essentially get um, basically free mods, free mods that users create. Um, so let's go ahead and see if that, if that thing actually manages to strike the target. And then we'll take a look at order of battle once we get to the 30 minute mark here. We'll also call in a bombard on the units over here. All right, let's see how it goes, come on. Definitely enemy tanks moving into position. Come on. Oh yeah, we definitely suppressed it. There's still some enemies in there though. Let's go for the assault. And we took the position, although look at that. Some engineers took over the 88 and they continue to be a problem. Okay, let's see. Bring up some more. And yes, sure enough, we got some Pumas. We've got some Pumas here. Boom! Dead Puma right there. Target destroyed. We'll keep on moving forward. Get another Puma here. Oh, we missed him. And actually, he's going to return fire on the Sherman. I'm a little more scared of the M5s dealing with the Puma because they could actually get taken out. Oh, come on. Be nice, Puma. The cover rating is actually 28%. Our chance of penetration is 72. Chance to hit is only 20%, so our overall kill chance is 14%. That's pretty low. Nonetheless, we got a suppression on them. We managed to get them to retreat, and we'll keep on moving forward with our boys here. Let's grab this guy. Move in with a hunt formation. 
And it looks like we've got some German infantry right in front of us. Might as well open fire. Ambush. <laughs> the eight-wheeled comfortable sports shoe. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one you're thinking of exactly. All right, we're going to try to assault this area, and we actually succeeded. Although, honestly, that was 67%. It's not a risk I would have taken um, had I been playing alone because there's a big chance that that would not have succeeded. And then, obviously, the unit goes into panic, the unit retreats, and you've got a problem on your hands. Okay, so I'm going to see here. I definitely want to clear the wreck out of the way. But I think we've got to wait at least a turn. And now we're going to jump over to Battle Academy, guys. So, I mean, excuse me, to Order of Battle. I uh, hope you guys liked the look at Battle Academy here. I want to save just in case we want to come back here today. Um, I was really liking this scenario, actually. So we're going to jump to Order of Battle now. It's going to take me a little while to get it just up and going. So be patient with me, please. Okay, so let's take a look here. It's probably going to show what I'm playing. If not, then we can put in some fun codes here. Either way, we're going to take a look at the two um, DLCs currently on sale here in Battle Academy. Or, excuse me, in Order of Battle. I've got my mind on Battle Academy now. Shame on me. Okay, so let's see. Well, at least here's what I'm going to do. This way, we could still do what we wanted to do. Hold on, guys. Sorry, we're going dark for a little bit. Okay, yes, we will be taking a look at Blitzkrieg and Winter War, and we've also got every single scenario for both. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Blitzkrieg first. Take a look at the scenarios here. Um, let's take a look at Blitzkrieg, and I think we're going to try... We could just go straight for the Blitzkrieg, of course, uh, but I think we're actually going to go for Dunkirk. Why not? Um, of course, this is the remembrance of D-Day, but D-Day was, in a way, sort of the opposite of, or Dunkirk was sort of the opposite of D-Day. Um, have I tried Sudden Strike? I can't talk about games that aren't related to our company, unfortunately. Um, so we're really focusing on those. Sorry about that. So we're actually going to be covering Blitzkrieg here, um, Nebelwerfer, and hopefully we're going to have some fun here. All right, guys, so we're going to be playing the Battle of Dunkirk here. We'll watch the mission briefing. The trap has closed. Our Panzer divisions have reached the Channel Coast, and the Allied forces have nowhere to escape. Yielding under constant pressure, the Belgian army has been forced to abandon most of the country. The city of Ghent has fallen to the German Army Group A, forcing the Belgians to retreat to their final line of defense. Uh, there are still significant numbers of French and British troops in the pocket, however. It appears that they have not yet given up hope for a breakout, as we still face occasional counterattacks. Uh, their final hope rests on the main ports along the English Channel. Our objective is to capture these, cut off the naval supply routes, and prevent further evacuation of enemy troops. Ultimately, we must mop up all remaining resistance in the Dunkirk pocket and bring a successful conclusion to Operation Falgelb before we turn south into the heart of France. Okay, guys. So, pretty much, our primary objective is to destroy all enemy ground units. Now, this is one of the kind of harder missions. Um, yes, Kandra is absolutely right. Um, it is one of the tough missions. you got to kill 85 units. That's, just a, that's one of the primary objectives. So, as you can imagine, um, definitely not going to be easy. Um, we're still going to try, of course, but... That's tough. I mean, killing 85 units is tough by any stretch of the imagination. And, of course, this is a Blitzkrieg, but it is rewarding. Let's put it that way. It's very, very rewarding. Um, we could definitely purchase some units. So I want to get some tanks. Uh, we already have a lot of tanks, but I think a few more Panzer IVs aren't going to hurt, right? So we'll get some Panzer IVs here. Let's buy some more Panzer IVs. Oh, sorry.
Get another Panzer IV over here. We could get some more units as we go through the game, of course. Now, Winter War is the other DLC we have for this game currently being sold uh, during our D-Day sale. And that one focuses on the Finnish War, uh, the Winter War, essentially, um, against the Soviets. Let's see if we could purchase some more. We definitely need some artillery. Maybe a nice artillery piece with a truck to carry it around. And maybe some infantry as well. Let's go for, say, infantry unit. And we'll definitely get a truck to move him around as well. So we're going to get started now. Now, of course, I would definitely uh, get some more units here. Um, but forcing Belgium to surrender is one of the big objectives here. Which I think we could pretty much do. Winter War is such a good DLC, says Neville Warfare. I really enjoy it, too. I think most people uh, that are into these sort of wars, uh, especially around World War II um, or pre-World War II, between World War II and World War I, are big fans of the Winter War. There's all sorts of tales being told about it, uh, about what the men went through. Uh, obviously, the invention of the Molotov uh, by the Finns and their ability at just torching a ton of Soviet tanks, Soviet vehicles. Pretty incredible stuff. And just to imagine that a country like that with, with that little of a population, uh, that small amount of population could stand up to a behemoth like the Soviet Union, Union is pretty incredible. Um, now, of course, they did eventually technically lose, but uh, they didn't lose their entire country. They just gave, I think it was, what was it, Karelia? Uh, they gave a few bits and pieces to the Russians, but not without a serious fight. So we've already found some French amongst the road. And we're going to go ahead and move up here with the tanks. See if we can open fire. Very cool. Somebody answer Shar's uh, question here. I think, wasn't the Minister of War Molotov? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Minister of War of the Soviets was Molotov. I could be wrong on this. Uh, but that's what I've always thought anyway. Or at least what I'm thinking when I don't have time to think because I'm too busy <laughs> streaming to you guys. Um, uh, cocktail for Molotov. That does make some sense. Sort of a, a little... Um, a little slap to the face for poor old Molotov. So actually, the enemy is putting up a pretty good defense here, the Belgians specifically. Um, and I might bring some more tanks over here and maybe some more artillery. I mean, this is a 21 centimeter. This is a nasty, nasty artillery gun. You can really put a hole through, through a freaking museum, put it that way. Ah, it's a Molotov's bread baskets. Interesting. That is pretty cool, man. Yeah, I always I knew it had something to do with him, but th that's very uh, specific. I I didn't know it was that specific. That's very very awesome. Let's also get some strategic bombers here if we can. I just hope we have an airfield nearby. I think we do. We'll find one if anything. All right, what units can we still move? Uh, I don't know if I want to attack that French unit. Well, we'll go for it. Why not? For some good of the Reich. As you can see, they're going to do way more damage to us here. Well, it's not significantly more damage, but enough to write home about. <laughs> oh, I see. That makes sense. Well, I believe you. I mean, it, it, it sounds pretty realistic. It sounds like a... Uh, Something that I, I would certainly think uh, would make sense. Nice. We're doing some really good damage to the French now. But as you can see, they've got some uh, artillery pieces. We've got to ride up on those artillery pieces. And there's also some French tanks. Definitely want to deal with those. I'm not sure how many of you guys know this, but actually the French tanks weren't so bad in World War II. Um, and a few of the tanks, uh, actually French tanks, fought on the Eastern Front once the uh, Germans actually requisitioned them for uh, German use. This also happened with Fireflies, British Fireflies, or sorry, American Fireflies, excuse me, a number of different vehicles. Uh, requisitioning those vehicles was pretty commonplace. So let's go ahead and get one of our tanks to face the French tank. 
And we definitely got to move these guys back. They are not in a good way. They need some reinforcements, and we need to bring in some bombers to start taking on the French over here. The acting and acting and it was terrible, and I trust Dally with this because him and him and I really do like uh, films, especially sort of older movies that uh, that have to do with war. But I'm going to trust him on this one. Let's open fire here. I think we could pretty much take out this unit this turn. And there we go. That's going to add to our kill count. Remember, we got to get to 85. And of course, we'll try other games before we get to that, uh, this particular Let's Play. But it's just something to consider. All right, let's see. We've got plenty of other units over here, but they have to focus mainly on this part of the map, the eastern part. Kind of like around the end of the Patriot. There's a, uh, a totally ahistorical film. I mean, there are parts of it that are somewhat historical, but overall the movie is, in my opinion, garbage. Let's go ahead and open fire here. So once again, guys, for those of you that are just arriving, today is the Remembrance Day of D-Day itself, uh, the actual Battle of D-Day, also known as Operation Overlord. So we do have a sale going on, 30% off all of our games on Matrix, um, and I highly recommend you guys take advantage of that sale. Uh, try to get in on it now while you still can, and uh, you know, become part of it, obviously. Join up. Um, I will go through the list of games, but my throat is getting a bit sore from repeating it so many times. Um, nonetheless, I will give you guys the link to the actual sale itself. First, let me try to kill this Belgian unit. Foil. We'll get there soon enough. So right now, this is going to be the link to the sale. So far, we've tried two games. Um, we're going to go try another one. We'll probably try a few more before the end of this stream. It's going to, we're going to try to make this into a two-hour stream. Um, so you better bet that this is, uh, this is a tough one for me. Um, I've done longer than two-hour streams before, though, but uh, I must say it's been a while. It's definitely been a while. So we're actually finding some British troops here. Um, and, of course, attacking them across a river uh, on a fortified position would be suicide. They would absolutely destroy us. Um, and we are playing the Battle of Dunkirk within Order of Battle Blitzkrieg. This is one of the games that is on sale right now. Uh, so I highly recommend you guys go check that out. Uh, as well as, uh, hey, make sure to let them know that Agrippa sent you. Why not? Let's go ahead and take a look here. And we're going to switch here to Panthers in the Fog pretty soon. Not yet, but pretty soon we'll switch to Panthers in the Fog and uh, try to have some fun over there. Yeah, I know you can move, but it's not good. So we're going to leave the unmoved unit there. Get hit pretty badly. Getting some French and British planes on the way. And actually, they're going to attack our bomber. We just bought that bomber, which is really what's pissing me off. We just paid for that thing. Thank you, Char. Look at that. There's another tank. Actually, be a Russian tank. Could that be Russian Lend Lease? Oh no, no way. That's not possible, is it? Okay, let's see. Uh, 
All right, so. Of course, we could take on that unit, but I think we're going to go after the Belgian infantry here. And of course, as you can see, the enemy has destroyed all these bridges for obvious purposes to try and see uh, if they could stop us uh, from, of course, crossing. Yeah, that works too, Char. Thank you. That definitely works. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can finish off these Belgian units. They ran away from us, but they cannot run away again. And they've actually left this bridge open. Which seems like not the greatest idea. If they're going to close down all the other bridges... You might as well really close down all of the other bridges and not leave bridges open like this. Probably not the wisest choice. Of course, to be totally fair, it's also not a very wise choice to be attacking over a bridge uh, with a tank against an infantry unit, or really to be attacking over a bridge at all. But we all have to make some sacrifices here and there, uh, and I think that that's just kind of part of, uh, of the sacrifice. Let's see if we can get across with the good old... SDKFC, Armored Car. Oh, nice. They actually fought back pretty well. Did not expect that. All right, let's see if we can start taking shots at this uh, French armored vehicle as well. Or actually, this French tank. Sorry, I can't tell the difference. They all look the same to me. So this is a Hotchkiss, a French Hotchkiss tank. Um, but let's take a look at this right here. This is a Somwa S35. If I'm not mistaken, a Somwa is uh, maybe a... Could it be even... Uh, it couldn't possibly be a Finnish tank. I think it's a Russian tank. Maybe Russian Len Lease. Maybe somebody could look that up for us. Or perhaps it's actually a French tank. What's kind of putting me off is that that red uh, thing on the side kind of looks like a red star, but it could be a different image. Um, and uh, it's looking pretty cool. But I'm pretty sure if we open fire on that thing, we're going to get blown to bits. So I'm going to go ahead and reinforce. Try to bring some more tanks up. We can always purchase more. French, thank you, Dally. It's a nice little tank. It's definitely going to put up a good fight. In fact, I'm a little afraid about it. Let's actually get a Panzerkampfwagen 3G which is a little better than a 4D, a little more expensive anyway. Maybe a little more armor on it. Thank you, Neville Warfare. So the Somwa is French, I must say. Pretty tank, very pretty. All right, so let's see. Let's see if we can hit the Somwa with some air attacks. I don't think we'll be able to do much damage to it, but what the hell, we might as well try. No damage to the Somwa. Oh, yes, War in the East is great. I mean, War in the West is also very good, um, albeit maybe a little more complicated than the War in the East, but, you know, once you understand War in the West, War in the East will be a breeze. Um, now, War in the West, not War in the East, but War in the West is available on our sale, um, and this is definitely a good time to pick it up. Um, once again, make sure that you've done your, uh, your air missions first. That's what kind of confused me initially when I started playing. I was like, wait a minute, am I, am I definitely completing my air missions before starting combat? Um, so you got to be careful, of course. Yes, definitely handle one game at a time. Unless, you, unless you're smart and you get a bunch of games during this sale, 30% off. It's probably a good time to go ahead and do that. But I know what you're saying, especially with Gary Grigsby games. Gary Grigsby games are some of the, my favorite games out there, but absolutely uh, take your time with them. You know, Don't just buy all of them at once. Really try and take your time, learn them, uh, learn all of the, the, all of the strategy within them, and you're going to really enjoy yourself with Gary Grigsby. Let me go ahead and try to get some reinforcements here. So we will read to you guys once again, for you, those of you guys just arriving, um, we are doing a D-Day stream to sort of remember D-Day. Um, and the games that we are uh, having for sale right now is Battle Academy and all of its DLC, Battle of the Bulge, Battles in Italy, Battles in Normandy, Battlefront, Close Combat Gateway to Khan, Close Combat Panthers in the Fog, Close Combat Vatam Rhine, Close Combat The Longest Day, Commander Europe at War Gold, Decisive Campaigns The Blitzkrieg from Warsaw to Paris. I really like that one as well. In fact, all of the Decisive Campaigns titles I really enjoy. Frontline The Longest Day, Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day Bombing the Reich, Gary Grigsby's War in the West, 
Gary Grigsby's World at War, A World Divided, once again, a great one. Heroes of Normandy, Heroes of Normandy, U.S. Rangers, History, Legends at War, John Tiller's Campaign Series, Norm Kroger's The Operational Art of War III, and I must tell you guys, with Norm Kroger's The Operational Art of War III, you really get more than just World War II. I mean, you could go to back to World War I, you could play in future wars, you could play in you know modern wars, Iran, Iraq, basically in the 80s, that sort of stuff. Uh, History, Legends at War, John Tiller's Campaign Series, uh, Panzer Corps, and all of the Panzer Corps DLC, uh, two of the Order of Battles, of Order of Battle Blitzkrieg and Order of Battle Winter War, uh, Piercing Fortress Europa, Steel Panthers, World at War, General, uh, General Edition, uh, Strategic Command, World War II, War in Europe, uh, Tigers on the Hunt, World in Flames, and World War II, General Commander. So a lot of games there for 30% off. It's definitely uh, worth picking up today. We're going to go ahead and jump into another game now. Uh, we could also take a quick look at Winter War. If you guys want to do that, but I think what we're going to do now is jump into uh, the wonderful, well, I also really like Heroes of Normandy, but we'll do uh, Panthers in the Fog, because we've played a bunch of uh, Close Combat Gateway to Khan here on the channel, but we don't usually play Panthers in the Fog, which I really enjoy. Uh, I will say that Close Combat Gateway to Khan probably has a more lively multiplayer community, but both of these games have multiplayer communities that, you know, have their own groups. So if you want to get into the multiplayer of these games, which really, to me, makes them even better than a single player, uh, you've got to go ahead and join those groups. You could find them on Steam without much of an issue. Uh, let's make sure that this is broadcasting, and yes, it is. There we go. We've got Panthers in the Fog ready to go. Any iOS sales going on? That's a good question. Um, if my... Um, if one of my uh, actual uh, colleagues is watching, which I'm not sure if they are, they can let you know. I'm honestly not sure. I'm honestly not sure. Uh, that's actually a very good question. So we're going to do one of the battles here, and it's the 80th Infantry versus the SS Panzer. Uh, and I think I might try. Now, I actually haven't played a lot here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the 35th Infantry versus the Panzerlehr. American armor swept aside our thin defenses. So we're actually playing with the Axis here. I want to change the Americans. Leading the attack of the 3rd Army, you've just passed through liberated Avaranche. Now your orders are to attack and capture the Saluna River crossing at Ducey. Enemy resistance is expected to be weak and disorganized. Well, you, they always say that, and then you've got a nasty amount of enemies here. So we're going to go ahead and move in and uh, see how we do. Okay, guys, so actually it's kind of a dawn battle. I don't know if you guys see that, but it's it's pretty dark um, in this battlefield. So we're going to go ahead. We want to definitely start taking locations. And one of the things I really like about um, Panthers in the Fog is it does have blood. Um, a lot of people, and myself included, kind of wonder why Close Combat Gateway to Khan never had blood. Um, you know, you could still kind of see men on the ground and things like that, but this, the blood in this game, really gets to me. It's something that I remember from being a kid playing uh, Close Combat 3, and so I love to see the amount of work and effort that goes into this. Of course, we've got to be careful on this mission because the Germans are already in Doucet. Uh, they're already here. They're not waiting. Well, they're not on the way. They're here waiting for us. So uh, if we're going to move in here, we want to be very, very careful as to who we approach and how we approach them. We do have a 60 millimeter mortar. That is a deadly piece of equipment right there. A 60 millimeter mortar, no thanks. I don't wanna go anywhere near it unless I'm manning it. I don't want, even if I'm manning it, I'm gonna be really, really careful. Make sure I don't blow my hands off. Let's get the bar team, and with the bar team, we'll set some of them over here to basically just move fast into these locations. Uh, the Sherman as well, move fast into this location we still got a bunch of rifle teams here that could probably do some work as well. So we'll move the rifle teams over here and get to the View Eglise. I believe the Eglise is French for church. I could be wrong on that. Let's get the bar team here and start moving. And let's get started pretty soon. We also have a flare, apparently. I don't know if we, ha if we can use the flare... Um, during this battle, but it's one of the abilities, uh, especially if you're playing the campaign, you can unlock the flare, you can unlock mortars, artillery, etc. Uh, Steel Panthers. Um, so I do know about um, Steel Tigers. I We don't have it today to show off to you guys, 
but um, it's actually a great game. A lot of people are into it. Um, sort of similar to Gary Grigsby in terms of its uh, level of complexity. Uh, I would definitely take a look at it. I do believe it's one of the games we do have on the sale. It's uh, Steel Panthers, indeed. And uh, in fact, I'll put the product here. Now, that's not what we're playing right now. Right now, we're playing uh, Close Combat. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> I'm getting just a little tired here. Uh, this is Panthers in the Fog. I'm just so used to playing Gateway to Khan uh, that I'm so used to saying that. So okay. we will put the Steel Tigers right here. And I don't know too much about uh, the, the remake, Steel Tigers, no. I'm sure my colleagues probably do. Uh, they seem to be much more uh, skilled in these games than I am. Uh, I'm just the spokesperson, put it that way. All right, let's begin the fight, guys. Here we go. I already see enemies. Give me one second. I don't know if you guys are getting sound on this. I'm certainly not. So give me one second here. I want to make sure you guys hear that. Are you guys hearing anything in game? Now, again, this would be an issue with uh, primarily the system, the Steam system, not actually the game itself, or, or more, more importantly, the, the Twitch system we're using right now. Um, so if you don't hear it, let me know, because the, the sounds in this game are awesome. And as you can see, we've got some Germans right here. We're getting some shots off already, but I definitely want to get some better shots, some closer shots. Not hearing sound on my side. Well, at least it's not just me. I do want to find out what's going on. Let's see. Give me one second. And if we can't find a solution, we'll switch off to another game. But I do want you guys to see some of the blood. You can actually see one of the guys already bleeding over here. Firing off a tremendous amount of shots. Okay, that is a little strange. Okay, so I will show you guys the illumination. This is, of course, the flares. So we can drop the illumination flares on the enemy to be able to spot them. And as you can see, our men can now see them very, very well. We're actually going to go ahead and keep moving. Uh, I believe this is as much zoom as we can get. Now, if you guys, have anybody, anybody that's familiar with uh, sort of the close combat series, um, this is as close as you can get. I think there are some exceptions like uh, uh, close combat three. I could be mistaken, but to just to get that tactical realism, we try to kind of keep it at this distance. Um, and uh, this kind of seems to be what a lot of the fans of the series seem to enjoy. Well, let's go ahead and get closer here. Look at all those bloody Germans. And we've also got a mortar attack. We'll bring in the mortar attack, too, just so you guys can see that before we leave. And once again, I do apologize for there not being um, sound on this game. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's not the game itself. I promise you that. If you buy it, you're going to get sound fine. It's probably Twitch just not really uh, being very friendly with us right now and not giving us sound for uh, this particular one. But definitely very, very bloody. Be nice to see the details of the assets the team has worked so hard to create. Absolutely. You're right. You're right. I mean, again, this is an older title. You got to keep that in mind, too. Um, but, for instance, we can zoom out like this. We can zoom in. That's about the difference there. Okay, look at that. We've just utterly annihilated those Germans. Like some of them might be surrendering or about to surrender. They are down, down for the count. It looks like we had one guy shot over here as well. So we're not totally um, unharmed. All right, we're going to end the battle there. I'm kind of annoyed, honestly. I'm going to make sure that I didn't accidentally turn off the sound. No sound. Here we go. Enable sound. Derp. Enable music. What do you guys say? Should we try again with Panthers in the Fog? Yes, I think we should. 
I can't help myself. Exactly. It certainly was. And that was all my fault. Shame on me. So we'll at least keep it to that. It doesn't totally drown me out. Well... No, I don't want to exit close combat. Are you crazy? It's the last thing I want to do. All right, so we'll enable sound. We won't enable music. And this is also cool. Like, uh, even as far as native language goes, you can actually change this to uh, just English so the German soldiers will kind of speak like uh, an, a sort of accented English. Or you could just keep the native language so the Germans speak German, the English speak English. And I think that did do the trick. Uh, scroll speed is fast. Uh, we've got it up to the highest actual graphic setting, but let's see. Okay, your turn won't be long now. Then this time we're going to be playing as the Allies against a major German attack. So this is going to be a little bit different than our last one. Um, I actually want to see if we can get any sort of... You can see the amount of different units we can get is pretty awesome. But I want to see if we can get any sort of uh, tank. If not, I'm going to feel pretty naked out here. I also love the unit badges, just awesome. Uh, I think it's PC, I'm not really sure. Again, if my uh, colleague is here, he could probably answer better than me. And there we go. So finally, we're gonna, of course, try to defend this area from the enemy. We've got that 57 millimeter gun. We've got a lot of units uh, over here, 60 millimeter mortar. And this is the hill. So this is where we're gonna station most of our guys. Put the bar team up here. We'll put them on ambush mode. Put this unit on ambush mode as well. Another bar team. And the enemy is going to be coming from over here, guys. So we're going to be setting our guys up right there, probably. I'm going to move them in to this building. And I'm also going to move this gun, this anti-tank gun, right there. Probably not a great place to put it because they're going to spot me right away. But I want to make sure that I'm ready for their attack. And this is one way to do it. Let's go ahead and ambush. We're setting this ambush southwards. Might need to wait because right now the enemy's starting point is cutting off my ability to turn that. Let's also bring another bar team forward. Again, we know where the enemy's coming from. The question is whether or not we can hold out against them. I'm going to sneak with these guys down here. And let's get started. All right, there we go. It's started already. <laughs> Come on, guys. And we actually do have a barrage ready to go. We just destroyed one of their um, one of their Stug 3s. Yes, the Stug 3 is dead. And I'm definitely going to bring a barrage to try to take out that next Stug. But I also want to bring the barrage to see if we can hit their infantry. Come on, come on. Let's go, baby. You can see the flare popping for the barrage. Come on, boys. Let them have it. Got some men moving north as well. A lot of close combat is going on there. That's why they call it close combat. Let's see how this artillery barrage does. Come on, give them hell, boys. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at all of those wounded Germans. Enemies launching some stuff at us as well. Boom! And I think we may have taken out another Stug. We're going to bring in some illumination rounds to make sure, make sure our guys can see the enemy here. Boom! We are getting a ridiculous amount of kills right now. I'm loving it. Unfortunately, we didn't kill the Stug 3. How's our rifle team doing? I'm going to make sure that that ambush is ready to take out the rest of these guys. In fact, we're gonna charge. And the enemy has already offered a ceasefire, which is pretty hilarious. And we did take out the Stug 3. No wonder these guys are terrified. We still got mortars and artillery coming in. And I think the enemy's gonna have to give up here. The sale is very tempting, says Carries. Well, it better be. It better be, man. It's, it's definitely tempting. And especially, this is, of course, Panthers in the Fog. 
Uh, Gateway to Khan is another great one. So these are two games that we do have on the sale for 30% off. Definitely a bargain. And keep firing at the Panzer Grenadier. Now, if you guys take a look at building two over here, we actually have a few guys that took some nasty hits, the bar team. Um, some guys have been killed. You can kind of tell by looking over here, red means killed, orange means uh, wounded. And just about everybody in this building has been killed or wounded. Nonetheless, we are doing just fine. Still got some Germans over here, a Panzer Grenadier team, as a matter of fact. Let's see if we can find that mortar team. 60 millimeter mortars. Now these are definitely capable of killing an entire unit. Got some enemy mortar fire coming our way, so I know they have some uh, some sort of mortars back here. I'm probably going to go ahead and accept that truce just so we can take a look at the casualties. Another ceasefire. Ah, liking the look of Panthers, Panthers in the Fog, eh? It is addictive. I will say, for me, the entire um, uh, close combat series is extremely addictive. But we'll go ahead and show you guys specifically Panthers in the Fog. For those of you interested in getting that. So, of course, don't forget 30% off here. And it's well worth the price. Don't forget, if you get some friends, uh, or if you join one of the many groups on Steam that plays this and Gateway to Khan, you can get some multiplayer matches going. Although I definitely recommend you start the campaign first and learn a little bit about the campaign before you get into multiplayer. You don't just want to jump in and start charging the enemy like the Germans did, just did with me. Um, you want to kind of know what you're doing. All right, we accepted the truce uh, just because I want to take a look at the losses here. And we can take a look. Uh, we had two leaders killed on our side, three infantry killed, nine infantry wounded, one uh, leader wounded. The enemy had five infantry killed, two leaders killed. 14 uh, infantry wounded, four leaders wounded, uh, as well as two armor destroyed. Of course, that's referring to the Stugs we blew to smithereens. But that's pretty typical in a war like this, um, you know, in, in any sort of war, really. You're going to have a lot more uh, wounded than you are going to have dead men. That's just kind of the way it is. Um, I'm not sure why. I guess the human body is a lot more resilient than we anticipated. We've also got this command bar here um, to go back to the actual scene itself. And I wanted to actually go back because you can actually take a look and see which of your units uh, gained a promotion which of your units uh, you know got more kills than another uh, you know it is possible for instance to gain a bronze star or something like that during the battle um, but you definitely have to fight really hard ah well i really love uh strategic command world war ii war in europe as a matter of fact you can head over to our matrix page uh, on youtube and you could take a look at our Let's Play. We've got a Let's Play of Strategic Command. I think we're on part four now. Um, we are playing Case Blue, so I believe that's 1942. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and link the Matrix Games uh, Strategic Command Let's Play for you guys to watch later because we're very proud of it. And obviously, it's a game I love so much. I mean, I'm still playing it. I'm on part four now. Uh, I'm going to keep playing it. It's just it's too fun to not play. Uh, and this is the beginning of Case Blue, so let me drop it over here in the comment section. And I hope you guys will stick with it. Core, which I don't think there are. Let's go ahead and drop that here. We can actually take a look. I believe we could take a look at Strategic Command here um, in a second. All right, now I want to try another battle this time. Uh, I want to see if I play as, say, Axis. Okay, elements of the 12th SS Panzer and Tiger tanks into the battle to try and break the stalemate. 
All right, so we're going to try to play as the Germans now. And I am playing some of the easier battles just for the action's sake. I mean, especially if you're playing the campaign, you're going to have some battles that are really, really challenging. Uh, but I really like the battles where I get to use the beautiful Tiger II. I mean, look at that tank. Look at that thing. It's just beautiful. It's a pretty open battlefield too here. So we're going to go ahead and move the Tiger II up to La Hamel. And we've also got the Panther A. So we're going to move these guys forward. We'll assist them with our infantry units, of course. But this time we are playing as the Germans. And I think just like any strategy game, if you're playing with a friend, like multiplayer or something like that, you probably want to discuss who plays who. Some people are going to do better with the Germans. Others are going to prefer to play with the British or the Americans. Uh, personally, I'm much more a fan of the British or the Americans, unless it's a tank battle, in which case I have to go with the Germans. They're just beasts. There's no other way to put it. Let's go ahead and move up here. And we can bring in some more Panzer Grenadier units as well. Why not? Let's get started. Fallouts. Already getting shot at, guys. Ah, oh, damn. I think that's a burned out tank, but it's making me very nervous. All right, there we go. Taking cover from enemy fire. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, they just destroyed our Panzer. This is not good, guys. They just destroyed our Tiger with a side shot. That is terrible news. Uh, we've got to find out where these guys are. Holy crap. Didn't expect this. Oh boy, come on guys, find that damn gun or tank. That was a very lucky shot by the enemy, a very lucky shot. Killing a tiger is not easy. Oh my gosh, keep moving boys. So clearly this is why this mission is considered a tough one, is because they know that we're gonna have to rush uh, with everything we've got left on the enemy position. And first, we've got to find the enemy. We've actually got an artillery strike, uh, as well as a regular uh, mortar strike here. The enemy seems to be using theirs a lot more effectively than we are. Come on, let's find the enemy. That's a beautiful tiger. Look at all those guys we just lost. That's a lot. Should have just stayed in cover. But we've got to find where the enemy is. goodness I'm gonna drop some smoke and I just heard some American voices so we're spotting them now and look at that I already see some American infantry units start opening fire at them with a panther a and I'm against my better judgment I'm already gonna drop my uh, my mortar on them I won't fire my uh, artillery yet but I will definitely drop the mortars on them We've already got enemy mortars falling on us. Nice! We can already see the enemy trench line here near Bertrand. So they might be able to escape a lot of the damage that our mortars would otherwise do. Keep it up. Nice, keep it up, boys. I'm worried because I know they've got a gun nearby, for sure. And we're actually getting pinged by that gun. I'm guessing the gun is here, but I can't be 100% certain on that. Keep moving, men up. And there's definitely some men in La Hamel. So your men definitely took a nasty pounding coming over here. It looks like most of our infantry got hit along the way. Oh, I see some enemy tanks. Here we go, guys. That's a Sherman for sure. We're gonna bring in the armor. 
armor piercing rounds, or just the general artillery. That's probably what killed our tiger, and there we go, he is dead. I think we might be able to move in uh, with even more infantry if we get some. But I hope that our artillery actually hits something in this area, put it that way. There's another one, another Sherman, and we got him. Don't let them escape, men. Holy crap, that blew out right in front of my tank. That actually could have... In yeah, it stopped my tank, guys. It immobilized my panther. Once again, be careful with the friendly fire. We did get a lot of kills with that artillery, but I'm already going to stop with this tank. I don't want him to get any closer. Got another barrage coming in. Oh, we've got some enemies nearby. And actually, they're trying to crawl up on our tank and possibly uh, get a kill on the tank. Again, if they get close enough, they do have anti-tank weapons. And they could possibly take out a panther. Nice. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right, I think we'd start moving forward now. Might be one more barrage incoming. There we go. We've got some enemy infantry over here. Get him, Panther. All right, so let's see if we can't send our boys into La Hamel. I'm assuming they have some units in here already, but we're going to take that risk. It isn't called close combat for no reason. Yes, very true, .com. It was a very lucky shot, honestly. And there we go. We've got some enemies here. Throw your grenades, men. Don't shoot. Oh, they're going to surrender. So we actually got one unit to surrender there. It's one of the th other things I love about this game is the ability for enemies to surrender or for your own men to surrender. Pretty realistic, especially if you are terrified in battle. Let's try to kill the Sherman. All right, we've got a lot of enemy tanks around us. Actually, it looks like they just killed one of our men. There's a beautiful kill. Another one. And unfortunately, it looks like they got all of our men here. But it was definitely a worthwhile fight. I like to think so. Some of the enemies are basically losing their minds in this battle. Good shot. And yep, you can see right there. Look at that, guys. A bunch of enemies surrendering. That's going to help us big time. So we've got a lot of enemy prisoners to question later. Of course, that initial bombing really took out a lot of our men, really hurt us big time. More enemies. Let's see if they'll ask for a ceasefire. And that's a platoon HQ, so obviously taking out enemy commanders, it's going to bring you a lot more points. Fire in the general direction of the enemy. Looks like 
this one guy managed to survive that. So we're going to send him towards the La Roche point. And if not, I think we have a Zoog troop unit here. And there we go. The Allies request a truce. I'll give it to them because I really want to see. And actually, the Allies won because they controlled most of the map points. I would have loved to see um, more Allies. And why would an enemy HQ ever sit out on the open road like that? I think they actually came down from the north, uh, hopefully to assist that unit in the center over here. But uh, since the battle was basically almost lost on their end, you can see the morale for them was 17%. We shouldn't have accepted the truce. truce. We should have kept fighting because we were actually really beating them uh, badly. Um, so let's take a look here just quickly at losses. And as you could see here, so the enemy lost four leaders killed, 13 infantry killed. That's major losses. 24 infantry wounded, nine uh, wounded here, and of course captured one leader, three infantry. We actually didn't lose that many men. We lost basically five men altogether killed, and the rest were all wounded. Uh, usually that initial artillery barrage does wound you badly. And uh, Dooley, this is a Panthers in the Fog. Uh, it's a close combat, Panthers in the Fog. I'll put a link here. And once again, today's our D-Day sale, so it's 30% off, which is a damn good deal for this game. Uh, so you definitely want to pick it up. And I wanted to show you guys the um, the soldier aspect here. So when we go to soldier, we can actually see how each of our men fought. And you can see here the badges that they won. This guy won two badges because he had five acts of bravery. And one of these is kind of the equivalent of the German, um, I guess, uh, Purple Heart. So not everybody gets it. It's either if you're killed or wounded, you automatically get that Purple Heart. Uh, obviously, the guy in this particular battle that probably did the best is Osterberg, who got a... Of course, an Iron Cross. Iron Cross is just an incredible medal uh, as a German, as you can imagine. And um, we're going to take a look here. And as you can see, these two guys also got an Iron Cross. And Kaiser got an Iron Cross with oak leaves, uh, which is even better than a regular Iron Cross. Pretty amazing stuff. So clearly our tankers did extremely well, and they definitely deserve those Iron Crosses. But it's just one, one part of the battle that I think is really neat. Uh, the fact that your own men kind of get, you know, promoted and things like that. I think it's really cool. So let's take a look at the opponent. How did they do? A lot of purple hearts. A lot of purple hearts. Some acts of cowardice. But overall, they, they fought pretty bravely. Let's see if any of the Shermans. Yeah, one of the guys got a rifleman badge. Or I guess it's a gunner badge. Um, it's one of the medals you can get in war. And let's take a look here. Actually, Perk, that's interesting you say that because I, in terms of multiplayer, uh, my favorite is uh, Close Combat Gateway to Khan, just infantry uh, without any armor support whatsoever. It's just, for me, it leads to longer fights. And obviously, if you have a friend to play it with, you can always go for just those infantry fights. Um, one of the rules I have is like one tank each and no tigers because the tigers can get pretty nasty. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at yet another game. Um, we're going to try to take a look at Strategic Command um, because we just recently released it on Steam. Um, so I'd love to go ahead and take a look. Some of you have already seen it on the Matrix site, uh, but let's see if we can't get it here to work on Steam. Uh, it might take a little while because some of these games we don't have fully prepared here. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we give you guys the best experience, of course. Don't forget that today is the, uh, of course, the Remembrance Day for all the soldiers that fought during Operation Overlord, also known as D-Day. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this 30% sale on the Matrix site. So I think we're getting Strategic Command here. I just want to make sure that it pops up. I've never read the man. I'm not. I'm not that old, <laughs> or maybe I'm not that young. Um, but uh, I actually don't think. I think Close Combat One is one of the few I haven't played. The very, very first one. Um, let's see if we can get game capture here for Strategic Command. I'm hoping this works. If not, I might have to do a screen share with you guys, uh, and I think I'm going to have to probably do that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, just this once. So we'll take a look here at Strategic Command, um, one of the many different, um, obviously, uh, years you can start in. And there's also user mods that the users create themselves. So we've got Storm Over Europe, Attack in the West, 
uh, Operation Barbarossa, Case Blue, Operation Citadel, and D-Day to Berlin. Now, considering this is Normandy, uh, we're going to go ahead and play D-Day to Berlin. And we are going to play as the Allies. Now, another thing that you can consider in this game that's pretty cool is if you want to use NATO icons, I really like NATO icons personally. It's just me. So I always use the land counter NATO, NATO style, but you can also use the 3D units. So today we'll take a look at the 3D units, at least some of them. And don't forget, we just recently released this game on Steam, but with the 30% uh, off thing, you can actually buy it right there on the Matrix store um, and just take a look. Uh, honestly, that's, that's up to the person currently moderating the stream. I'm just doing the video. I'm not actually moderating the stream. Um, generally, we don't allow links. It's just kind of a thing we do. Uh, if it's safe, I mean, we'll have to see. You'll have to ask them. Um, so we'll take a look here at D-Day to Berlin. And we are using the unit counters instead of the NATO counters. I really like both, but I have to say I'm a bigger fan of the NATO counters. But just so you guys get an idea, um, you could take a look. And in fact, recently, um, which was really, really funny, um, somebody managed to create uh, counters from uh, Panzer Corps. So you can actually, if you download one of the mods, you can actually get Panzer Corps counters, uh, which are really, really fun to use, I must say. Um, so as you can see here, you can read the Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, statement, and we're going to be playing as the Allies, so you can see all of our units ready to go. Now, we can also play, we're also playing as the Soviets, of course, uh, which also make a part of the Allies, but in this game, you've got to control a number of different fact, a number of different members in a faction. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with the invasion of Normandy, and of course, we're going to suffer some casualties on landing, but hopefully we'll make up for that later. And really, this game, like I said, you could start in any year. Uh, there's a diplomacy uh, part of the game. So in other words, if you want, you can actually try and get countries that would never join the Axis or the Allies to join you by putting some of your points towards them. You can also get new units. You can research new technology that maybe wouldn't have been around uh, at the time period. So it really gives you the opportunity to try a bunch of different things in the game. And I, and I love that personally. Um, ah, you're a ham operator. Very cool. Congrats, man. Very cool. So we're trying to land uh, already. I will be providing some battleship support right from the Texas. There we go, boys. I'm bringing some more of our units here, but I think most of them I want to drop behind enemy lines. So some of our U.S. Corps are going to suffer casualties, but we're going to attack that garrison unit. And we've got a tank here. Try to attack Cherbourg. Or oh, Cherbourg. Also going to go ahead and move forward here. And I think we just destroyed a garrison unit. Obviously, a lot of the garrison units are made up of Ost Brigades. Uh, those of you that don't know the Ost Brigades, they're basically uh, non-Germans that have joined the German army, uh, either by force or willingly. Uh, generally, I think by force, uh, you join us or you're going to have some major problems sort of thing. Um, but that actually worked. That was a good portion of the German units uh, during uh, the actual fight. How long that stream will be? I think, are you asking how long will this stream be? So, so far we've done an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to try and get to two hours or close to that. Um, but I'm not, sure how, I'm not sure how long I can make it. I'll keep going as long as I can, put it that way. And of course we're doing this in the memory of all those who fell on the beaches of uh, Sword Beach Anzio. Uh, we'll see if anybody can name the other ones as well. And let's keep on moving here. So I'm also going to bring in some bombers to assist. Noworries.com. We're going to be uh, uploading this afterwards. We're going to try to upload the entirety of this stream um, so that you, so everybody gets to take a look at all the different games that we're playing. And we might actually jump back to Battle Academy quickly, just so I can show you guys one of my favorite things about Battle Academy, which are the user mods. Um, it's basically just mods that have been created by users to create new battles, uh, even new eras. So you can even play World War I, for instance. That's one of the many mods, and it's really quite cool. <laughs> for another three minutes. That's not me typing that, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's just my colleagues know me, which is hilarious. Um, you know, we said two hours, probably something more like an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, but I, I do want to prove them wrong, so we'll probably keep on going. 
Yes, the user mods have been outstanding. Absolutely. Um, I love them. And really just adds a whole new degree of depth to the game. Uh, you know, it's not something that we've made. We haven't actually created those mods. Those are totally made by users, uh, which is just unbelievable. All the hours is Dally. Yeah, you wish. <laughs> you wish. I think Dally was here on my other channel where I did. I managed to do a, what, a 12-hour stream? That was extremely painful. Um, let's take a look. Okay, let's see if we can send over a bomber. Um, no, nah, we'll send over some battleships. Of course, just like many of these operational level war games, you guys see these generals over here looking over the maps? These are a lot easier to, sort of a lot easier for me to tell who's who with the NATO counters. But basically, you want to keep these generals close to your men. Um, if they're not close to your men, they're not going to be bringing them supplies. They're not going to be bringing them any sort of morale boost. So you always want to try and get these guys as close as possible. Um, if you want to create an amphibious transport, you just do this. And of course, this guy's ready to move. But you've got to make sure you've got enough uh, political points uh, to actually move these guys. That's obviously a big issue. So let's see here. Amphibious transport once again. Let's create another amphibious transport. We could also create a long-range amphibious transport. Each of these is probably more effective than the last, but it goes up in costs. So you've got to be careful, of course. And if you want, you go all the way to the Eastern Front and you could play as the Russians. So there's just like a bunch to do just in that first turn. And then, of course, when you end the turn, uh, there's all sorts of uh, national events that occur. Sometimes you'll have partisans rise up in different areas, uh, like you'll have partisans rise up in Slovakia or Hungary uh, to assist you in fighting the enemy. Same goes if you're playing the Germans, although I've never actually seen pro-German partisans, but you do have nationalists that rise up to uh, support you in a lot of these countries, especially if you start off at the very beginning. Oh, I appreciate it, .com. Well, this one's definitely a special one. You know, usually we focus on one game specifically, but we've actually gotten a lot of viewers on this stream, which we really appreciate. So maybe this is something we'll do in the future, uh, just like a collection of different games. Uh, I definitely think it's something we could do. Now I want to jump over to Battle Academy really quickly um, so that we can take a look at the user mods because they are impressive, let's be honest. Take a look here, Battle Academy. So if we take a look at uh, campaigns really quickly, there's this really cool button up here and uh, download community scenarios. So if we click that, all of these scenarios, every single one of them has been created by a member of the community. The way we decide essentially which ones make it and which ones don't is really by playing them ourselves. If they're good enough, we make, you know, we allow them. So if you guys want to try making a scenario using the editor, go for it. Try it out. Uh, Normandy 44 is obviously a really interesting one. The one that I was playing, uh, the Beach Saliente, uh, is in 1945, but I'm trying to find... The Great War 1918. Yeah, this is the one I really love. Made by Tim 1966. Um, and this this is just a great, great let's play. You can obviously play World War One as opposed to World War II. Uh, I think I'm going to take a look at the D-Day Special Forces one here uh, by Amaris. I might even play it on my own. Um, it's looking pretty cool and, and sort of see what it's about. But uh, basically the creator of this actual game... Um, you know, uh, Richard Bodley Scott, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, we'll actually look through these and decide which ones should be up here and which ones shouldn't. Um, it's kind of the way it works. And once again, we want to make it very clear, guys, today is the D-Day sale. So uh, if you guys want to get that 30% off, just head to Matrix Games and you will be seeing it. So let's actually take a look here at D-Day Special Forces. And even this is created by a user, all of these images. So we're gonna play D-Day Special Forces here. 30. 
so the Merville battery, with this 150 millimeter guns, the Merville's battery could stop the landing at Sword Beach. You're, you order the 9th Battalion and you must take the four bunkers containing the guns. Expect heavy losses. I think this is actually an episode from Band of Brothers, um, if I'm not mistaken. It's taken out these four guns. Uh, and we can actually get some British paratroopers here. We could also get a universal carrier and some 3-inch mortars. I love 3-inch mortars, so I'm probably going to grab one of those. Uh, and maybe, I think that's all we can buy, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and see what this map looks like. So definitely a much more, ooh, this is awesome. So it's at night, number one. We've got to cross into the German lines and take out their guns. And as you can see, those bunkers are going to be stacked full of men. So I'm guessing we probably should move through the cornfields here. But that is really cool. I love the look of the British Paras. You just get up close and personal. They've got those red berets. Adorable but deadly. It's always good. All right, let's go and see, grab a few more British Paras. And we're just going to see what the battle's like, at least the start of the battle. So we definitely don't want to be spotted, uh, obviously. And also a Bren gun. I mean, oh yes, that makes me happy. Well, I'm starting to see some bunkers over here, or light fortifications anyway. That could definitely be some enemy units. Okay, let's end the turn here. Actually, we have some more units over here. Oh, damn it! Some Germans spotted us. So much for being sneaky. All right, so these guys are going to take the brunt of the attack. Yeah, I think you're right. We should have gone over here to the left, maybe even this way. Uh, now, of course, we're up against a German machine gun. Drill sergeant. This is interesting. And I think this would probably... If I'm not mistaken, it's either going to give these guys a rank. Uh, remember, this is an ability created by the actual user himself. Or maybe it will take these guys out of suppression mode. I think it's probably going to be one or the other. I'm not going to use it yet. I'm going to end the turn. So to find these mods, and I'll actually show you guys very, very soon. Um, it's pretty simple, actually. And this is a tough one, by the way. I'll tell you that right now. This is definitely made by somebody who knows how to play the game much better than me. So the amount of uh, actual enemy defenders here is just incredible. And they're, do they're very good shots as well. So the way it works is like this, guys. If you want to download one of the mods, I keep saying wait, and but I really want to try and get a kill, so hold on a second. So what we do is we go back to uh, exit game. I'm going to quit. Sorry, we're going to have to reopen the game. Shame on me. And I'll show you exactly where to find these mods. So, you guys see the main game screen right here. I hope you see it. If not, I've, made, I've done something horribly wrong. Um, and if you take a look at the campaigns, you click on campaigns. Now, you go up. Up here, you see where the folders are? One of these folders, uh, well, these this folder actually says download community scenarios and it's pretty true to its name it's basically you go here you click this and it opens up a list of free mods made by users made by uh basically by players 
Um, and you can go here and download any number of different mods. Um, there's a bunch of different ones. There's Pacific Campaign one, so you can actually play against the Japanese. Uh, and this is not part of the game. I mean, all of this stuff was made by actual users of the game. Um, overall, this is some very, very interesting stuff. Um, now, of course, if you go back, we've got a ton of scenarios. And remember, or I should say a ton of our own mods, our own DLC. Uh, every single one of these DLC today are also on sale, um, just like the game itself. So if you want to take a look at one of these and want to pick them up, now is definitely the time to do it. Um, now more than ever. And um, we've got Western Desert Campaign, the Battle for Normandy, Battle of the Bulge, Blitzkrieg France, etc., uh, once again, um, I'll just go through the list of actual games we are selling today um, on this sale for 30% off at the Matrix website, and that's going to be Battle Academy and all of its DLCs, Battle of the Bulge, Battles in Italy, Battles in Normandy, Battlefront, Close Combat Gateway to Khan, Close Combat Panthers in the Fog, Close Combat Walk Dumb Rhine, Close Combat The Longest Day. And I want to remind everybody, by the way, a lot of people worry that you're not buying their games on Steam. If you buy the game on the Matrix site, you get a Steam code. So either way, you're going to be able to play the game on Steam. So once again, if you buy the game on the Matrix site, you are going to get a Steam code. Uh, Commander Europe at War Gold, Decisive Campaigns, The Blitzkrieg from Warsaw to Paris, Frontline, The Longest Day, Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day Bombing the Reich, Gary Grigsby's War in the West, Gary Grigsby's World at War, A World Divided, Heroes of Normandy, Heroes of Normandy, U.S. Rangers, History, Legends of War. Um, we've also got John Tiller's Campaign Series, Norm Coker's The Operational Art of War III. And once again, I want to remind you, in The Operational Art of War III, it's not just World War II. There are even modern warfare battles, so wars in the Middle East that took place 20 years ago. You could play, um, obviously, as you could play the Vietnam War. Uh, you could play um, a number of different wars. Uh, even Gr the invasion of Grenada is there. I mean, there's just everything. Um, we've got Order of Battle Winter War, Order of Battle Blitzkrieg, uh, Panzer Corps, and all of the Panzer Corps DLCs, uh, Piercing Fortress Europa, Steel Panthers, World at War General Edition, uh, Strategic Command World War II War in Europe, Tigers on the Hunt. Somebody mentioned Tigers on the Hunt earlier, so that's definitely on sale. Uh, World in Flames and World War II General Commander. So the amount of games there for 30% off is just incredible. Um, you're asking what game this is? So the, this one is called Battle Academy uh, Lecho. Battle Academy. I'll put it right here for you. Uh, that's the name of this one, at least. But there's plenty more. Plenty, plenty more. Um, but anyway, guys, let's not forget, of course, the people that fought and died uh, during Operation Overlord, during D-Day. And um, really just an important time, important time and place today uh, to just look back and remember those guys uh, that definitely uh, beat the Nazi war machine or assisted in beating the Nazi war machine big time. Um, who knows what would have happened had Operation Overlord not happened. Certainly the war would have gone on for a lot longer and probably a lot more people would have died. Um, so we definitely have to thank those veterans. Um, and once again, today we've just got that 30% sale uh, to try and commemorate that. Uh, hope you guys will stop by. Um, and, uh, and obviously get a game, get something, uh, you know, to, uh, obviously, uh, take up some of your free time when you're not uh, busy at work, you can be at home, uh, having some fun. So that's the way I see it anyway. Uh, we will try to take some questions if anybody has any, I'm not a hundred percent sure if my colleagues are watching right now, they've probably fallen asleep at this point, but I want to thank you guys for all sticking around. You guys certainly stuck around for a while. Um, nearly an hour and 45 minutes, and you bet we're going to make it to that hour and 45 because uh, I want to be able to do that. Uh, Byron says, I've always wanted a full campaign for Battle Academy. Does the Eastern Front have one? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, the Eastern Front, since it's not Normandy, since it's not the Western Front, is not one of our games that's 30% off. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Battlefield 2 Kursk does. Um, I think, yeah, I think .com is correct. I think it's got mini campaigns, um, but pretty like pretty formidable mini campaigns. It's not just like, oh, yeah, that was easy. I mean, you actually got to think to, to win them. Um, but unfortunately, that's not included in our sale just because it doesn't take part on the Eastern Front. And we are making some exceptions. Like we do have, uh, obviously, Order of Battle Winter War, which is not 
really Normandy or, or anything like that or Operation Overlord. But we decided to, uh, to kind of put, just put it there because uh, we wanted to see the interest it would generate. Um, but in general, yeah, um, I would recommend every single one of those games. Uh, I would definitely ask people to just take a look, go check it out. And once again, if you're worried about not getting a Steam version of the game, uh, you're going to get a Steam version anyway. So that's going to happen no matter what. If you purchase a game on the website, you will definitely um, get it. And by the way, uh, Oxy Bells is asking about uh, Eagle Day Bombing the Reich. Uh, yes, Eagle Day Bombing the Reich is included in our 30% off. So um, I, in terms of seeing it now, unfortunately not. Um, I'm probably going to be heading home here pretty soon. Um, and I don't actually think we have it installed on this PC. But if you were asking about it, uh, it is one of the ones. And yes, Heroes of Normandy is also on sale, Byron. Uh, it is, in fact. Uh, so this is a good day to pick up Heroes of Normandy, um, as well as Heroes of Normandy US Rangers, which is one of the modifications for the game. Um, so you can get both of those for 30% off. This is definitely the right time to pick them up. And uh, for those of you that missed the first part of the stream or the last part of the stream, you know, don't worry. We're going to try to upload this uh, tomorrow uh, onto the channel, the entire one hour, 45 minute stream, um, and uh, see if you guys will actually want to be a part of it. And actually, we started this stream a bit early, so it's an hour and 50 minutes. I give myself that much credit. What would I say would be the closest thing you have to access an Allies board game? That's a really good question. Um, I would say probably Strategic Command. Of course, Strategic Command is much more in-depth than, than Access and Allies, but if you want that feeling of like taking over entire countries and you know taking over just massive areas, I would probably say Strategic Command. Maybe also Panzer Corps. Panzer Corps goes back a really long time. Um, you know, years and years ago, there was something called Panzer General, and obviously we took Panzer General, or the idea behind Panzer General, we made a much better version of it with so many DLCs at this point. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't even know how many DLCs we have, but it's, it's an incredible number. I think it's 18, if I'm not mistaken. And these aren't just like, you know, tiny DLCs. These are like major, major DLCs. Yeah, just like Byron's has tons of DLC for Panzer Corps. Um, I mean, you'll, you'll, you won't run out of stuff to do on that game. I promise you that you'll get sick of it before you run out of DLC. And it'll take you a really long time to get sick of it. Because I still play Panzer Corps and I work at the damn company. So that goes to show you that uh, it's an addictive, very, very addictive game. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, have an awesome, awesome day. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, you can always stop by our channel at matrixgames.com on YouTube. I would also, or Matrix Games Press, excuse me. Uh, I'd also recommend that you guys try and stop by our Slytherin Games uh, website as well. Um, so let me put the Matrix Games Press right here. And I want to make sure you guys are subscribing to this. Let's go ahead. And Slytherin Games Press here as well. So this is the Slytherin Games link. Thank you, Northumbrian Laddie. Appreciate it. No problem. It was my pleasure, guys. I hope you had fun. Okay, my friends. Thanks so much. Don't forget to subscribe to those two channels. Don't forget to take a look at these games and have an awesome, awesome day. And don't forget uh, all those that fought and died for us during Operation Overlord. Thank you, my friends. Take care. Have a wonderful day.